I'm incredibly excited to welcome our next guest. Uh, she's the founder of Florida BlogCon, a Florida blogger and social media conference. You know, she's worked in media, you know, in every single facet from online to TV. She was the talk show host for Blog Talk TV as well as now she even has a, you know, a radio talk show uh, called Smarketing News. So I, I'm really excited to welcome Bess Hour. Um, you know, she's a digital strategist. She, uh, a content curator. You know, she's an incredibly creative person and she is re gonna really help us shape our next year's goals as far as, you know, connecting socially in our digital world. So thank you so much for your time today, Bess. Hey, Joel, thank you. I'm excited to be here. So for our audience, you know, the biggest question that we often get is where should they invest their time? Because there's so many different facets and I know you know this better than anybody. You know, does a website matter anymore? Can I just be, you know, have a simple, you know, easy website, one page website and may focus my time on social media? You know, where should I be investing my time? You know, that's a great question. Uh, years ago when I first started blogging, uh, I wrote a, a guest article for the Orlando Sentinel called, uh, it was under their column, Tech for the Rest of Us. And that was one of the questions because Facebook for businesses was kind of new, Twitter was kind of new, and so people were used to being just on their website and they actually had a separate blog site. So people were like, oh my gosh, where do we spend our time? Great question, especially for you know busy, busy business owners. They've got a business to run much less do the marketing. So I think it's uh, crucial that they identify where they need to be spending their time. So I think really all it comes down to, as I'm sure you would say, what are your goals? What are your goals with the marketing? Is it to get people inside your store? Is it just to get people to hear your message? Are you a service provider? What are your goals? And so once you know what those are, then you can start crafting, where do I need to spend my time? So for example, there is a, a local uh, personal training studio that I work with. And of course they make their money by getting people in the door to train with them. Mm -hmm. And so their classes, the programs that they offer, everything is done on their website. So it was okay. crucial to get eyeballs and people who are gonna take action to their website. So we crafted plans on all their social media to drive back to the website. Okay. Now compare that with another company that I consult with that is they create videos and their whole monetization strategy is based on video views. Uh, not not for overlays or anything like that. They actually get the video sponsored by companies. So okay. they need as many eyeballs on that as possible. And so they didn't care where people saw it. It didn't matter if it was on a website or whether it was on Facebook or Instagram or where it was. So we really worked it on taking out that extra step of somebody having to click to the website. We put the video right in front of them on social. Hmm. So again, I think it really comes down to what are your goals? What do you want to do to where you need to spend, be spending your time? Got it. And I think you're right on there. You know, most of these things can really be driven down into the end goal. You know, but if I have a brand, uh, a retail brand trying to get into stores. You know, how can I drive customers into those retail stores? You know, once I have placement in that store from social media. Yeah. So we're talking a brick and mortar store, yeah, right? Yeah, brick and mortar. Yeah. So that would be similar to what we were doing with the with the import, the training studio here mm -hmm. locally. So their social strategy. Of course, everybody wants you know millions of followers, but if you were a store here locally. Mm -hmm. You want those millions of followers right here. Right. You don't care about people in Minnesota if you live in Florida unless they're going to come visit your store, which is not real likely. So you want to be doing a variety of things as far as, you know, taking care of making sure that you're posting things that appeal to your local audience. So okay. you want to make sure you're you're concentrating kind of geolocation type things. So um you know, things that are relevant to a person that lives in your community. Uh, you know, are there parades that are going to shut down the, the community? Has the local college won a national championship that people are excited about? So you want to feel like you are part of that community. So you want to embrace it. You want to also partner with other organizations and businesses that focus on local. And then you kind of benefit by that reciprocal 
oh, messaging. So, you know, if you're spreading a message about another company, ideally, then they're going to also spread about you. Okay. So you also look for those online partnerships with other local entities. And then you also want to give incentive to get people in the door. Maybe you're offering deals that are limited ideally, that uh, limited time only that they can only get inside the store. Maybe you even do get creative, think out of the box and hold some meetups inside your store. That's a good you idea. Can, you can do all sorts of different things, coupons that they have to be in person to use. Right. Or you can even partner, use some of those partnerships that you've made online you know, if you are a for-profit store, maybe you hold a benefit for a non-profit inside your store. So people feel like they're doing good while also coming inside your store. So there's all sorts of different strategies that you can advertise and promote online. Make sure you're looking for local promotion mm -hmm. and local fans to get them inside the store. That's a great idea. You know, I think a lot of people just focus on doing advertising, but you know, it, it's really kind of, doing those partnerships that build that strong community bond, you know. And that brings me to my next question, which came from a member. <clears throat> How do I maintain and grow, you know, the online following I have? Because, you know, when, when you're launching, when you're first getting out of there, you know, you're, you're marketing, you're blowing, blowing up, you know, you're talking everywhere and people find you. But, you know, as you become successful and as you start establishing, you work on the business more, and then, you know, your online could become stagnant. So what, what kind of strategies can somebody use to help that grow? Well, if you haven't, and I, I'm sure our, our business owners have, but if they haven't yet taken time to identify kind of their customer avatar or customer profile, who is their customer? Uh, and sometimes it's not always who we think it is. You know, sometimes we have an idea of who we want our customers to be, but who right. is actually. So make sure you're taking time to identify who your target customer is. Mm -hmm. And then you want to make sure that you're using the platforms that they're already on. So if you are a company trying to market to, let's say, teenage boys, you probably don't need to be spending your time on Pinterest. So you want to make sure that, first of all, you have you know who your customer is. Second, you want to make sure that you are on the right platforms to reach them. And then you want to make sure that you're up to date with all the latest strategies. You know, we, we, in the big news, Facebook has just had this big logarithm change. You want to make sure that you are paying attention to the, the marketers that are out there. Joel, I'm sure you provide your clients with this type of information. Whenever there's a huge shift of best practices for each platform, you need to make sure that you've read the, you know, the cliff notes of it. You don't need to be the expert if you're just the business owner, but you need the cliff notes and you need to make sure that you're using those to your advantage. And then once you have started working on those platforms, make sure you have a strategy for each individual platform because the best practices on Facebook are not going to be the best practices for Instagram right. or the best practices for Twitter. So you want to make sure you want to know what are those best practices formulate a plan and then stick to it. And the best way is to make sure that you have something in mind with consistency. So you wanna make sure that you're consistent. Don't just tweet once a week and never be seen again. Make sure you know how often to tweet is best for your business and what time of day to be tweeting. And then it's the content that you promote or that you tweet or that you post. It has to be of interest to that target customer that you're trying to get. Of course. Yeah, and that that's great advice. I think that really having that, you know, having that strategy takes the pressure away as well. You know, and so once you have that written down, you don't have to think about it anymore. You can just schedule it in, and, you know, execute or outsource it. But you know, what would be the advantage to having you know a strong online following instead of you know just you know building a business like typically? Yeah, so first, um, let's talk about what strong means. Mm. So I'm always quick to caution people that strong does not mean huge. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, it's great if you have millions of followers, but uh, as a lot of businesses and brands are finding out when they when they partner with, and of course, my end is the influencers. I work a lot with bloggers that produce content for these brands. And the brands always say, oh, I want somebody with a huge following. And what they're finding out and what the industry is finding out that huge doesn't always mean an engaged following. So you want to make sure that you're following, forget about the numbers. You want fans that are going to like you, that are going to take action when you ask them to, they're going to buy your products or services, 
and then are going to be your big, biggest advocate. They like you so much that they then are talking about you as well. That is a definition of a strong audience. Not huge numbers, but the numbers that you do have are rabid fans that love you. And so that strong audience, if they take action when you want them to, if they spread your message further, you are the one that they are recommending to their friends and fans that word of mouth marketing. That's the advantage of having a great social media presence. That's a, that's a, that's a great point. You know, and social media is one of those components, but the other one's really the website. You know, and a, a big thing for a lot of people is, you know, what do they talk about on their website? Because everybody always says you got to keep your website updated. You got to keep the content you know, fresh. You know, what, what should somebody blog about? Yeah, so that's a great question. And really that stumps a lot of people because once again, new business owners are busy running your business. You don't need to be thinking about that. So there's a couple ways to use what you blog about to your advantage. Of course, uh, if your website never changes, meaning that blog never changes content, then uh, I'm sure you you are aware of the, you know the, the the latest on Google. What how many days they go before they stop crawling your site? Yep. You don't update it and change it. So a lot of business owners though don't realize if they don't update that site, Google does stop crawling. Therefore, their SEO suffers and they drop in that page ranking. So keeping fresh content, meaning updating the website. So how do you do that? What do you blog about? Well, you first want to blog about things that your industry is about. You want to show through that blog that, hey, I am the expert in personal training. I know about personal training or I know about how to uh, do gardening. I know. So you want to be the expert and show that through your blog post. So okay. industry related blog posts are always a no brainer, but guess what? You can get two for one. You can do a long form blog post and then a month or two later, take that same blog post, but do it as a listicle or in a bulleted format. So you okay. get two posts for the price of one. That's an easy way to do it. The next thing you can do, especially if you are a brick and mortar store appealing to a local audience is you can write about those, those local events. You know, here in Orlando, UCF claimed the national championship in football. I know it's up for debate. I'm rooting for them, but uh, that was a huge thing. All the businesses were talking about and supporting their local college. So pay attention to those local events. You also have a national and international calendar to follow. You know, when it's holiday time, when it's summertime, you can always somehow find a relationship those to your business and then current events in other ways you might have to be creative with how you how you relate them to them relate them to your business so a great example was I used to run Florida Swim Network and so this was a website that live streamed competitive swimming in the state of Florida very very niche so um, us relating to current events sometimes was a challenge but sometimes it wasn't so when Robin Williams passed away of course he was the comedian um, he also was a huge triathlete. He enjoyed doing triathlons a lot. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so um, we uh, reposted a story that we had done. Robin Williams had joined a team with um, some disabled athletes. And so he was the bike portion of a team. The swimmer had no legs and he swam the swim portion and then he had on his hands had to make his way up to Robin Williams to tag for Robin Williams to get on the bike and bike and so we took it from the point of it that you know not only did the acting and comedic world lose a great figure but so did the athletic world and so that became one of our most popular blog posts of that year so you never know how you can create um, connections with what's going on in the greater world with your industry so always look for those types of things and then the final the final tip i'll have for creating content is pay attention to your audience to your community what are they naturally talking about what are their concerns and you can do this either by just listening socially watching what they're doing, or you can even create a survey, ask them directly, hey guys, what are some of your concerns that you'd like to learn more about? Those are great points, and I think you really hit on a, a cool subject there, is that with the Robin Williams uh, blog, you know, that, in my opinion, is incredibly shareable. You know, so you know, that could go, pardon my term, but viral on social media. Um, but what are the biggest mistakes that people make, you know, when they're you know, on social media, when they're trying to build their following? What uh, you seeing? Not listening to their following and not serving them. Huh. So, um, 
if you are just using it as a billboard, mm -hmm. you don't need to be in social media. Social media is called social media for a reason. It is social. Nobody wants to be advertised at. Right. It's to be engaged with. So the biggest mistake I see companies or brands or small businesses using or doing or making on social media is just posting it and forgetting it and just talking at their customers rather than engaging with them. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that being a, you know, a thing. Nobody likes to be sold, right? But it, it's a... It's a <laughs> funny that you lead into that because that's our next member question that uh you know they want to know is it possible to automate their social media <laughs> they, they want to they want to distance themselves a little further from that is it possible to automate it and actually do a good job yeah 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 it definitely is and and you know hundreds and thousands of companies do it all over and they do a great job with it okay. so if you're going to automate and by the way it's a great tool there are plenty of tools tweet deck hootsuite i mean sprout social there are tons uh, i'm a big fan of hootsuite i use the free version for multiple accounts because nobody else shares it with me so it's great um so there's a lot of free third-party tools to okay. automate even on facebook you can schedule posts but here's the key so um, for Florida Swim Network, I'll use that example. We would post anywhere between uh, three and five blog posts a day because we were a news aggregate side of what college swimming is doing, high school swimming is doing, age group swimming, gearing up for the Olympics, nationals. We had a lot of different news. So we would write them on our website, on the blog, and then we can post them all at once. So what we would do is we would spread them out throughout the days of the week. We would schedule those, but they were just news stories, nothing controversial. But we would not then just forget it and never look at social for the rest of the week. We would every day be checking on there, making sure it got posted correctly, and then see if there are any reactions about it. And then we also were commenting on things in real time. So it's the combination of the two. Okay. Now, I do have a cautionary story, that I, a, a real-life cautionary story of automation gone bad. Okay. It comes from Orlando City Soccer, who is a wonderful organization. They do a great job on social, but it was a holiday. It was Thanksgiving, and so people were kind of shut down business-wise. People had scheduled their tweets and everything and had gone about their business. But the only problem with that was it was also a time when People are a little bored, you're with family, you've been with them for a while, you pick up your phone, you start checking things. Well, Orlando City Soccer posted a promotion of a pink jersey. Okay. And they said, very innocently, how do you get your girlfriend to watch soccer? Buy her a pink jersey. Oh. In her mind, it was, in lots of people's minds, it was a very sexist tweet that, what do you mean, girls can't like soccer? So you can imagine the responses. Yeah. Now, everybody makes mistakes. That The tweet in itself, the promotion, honest mistake, they weren't thinking quite right. If they had quickly gotten on there and said, oh my gosh, guys, you're right, absolutely, our, you know, our apologies for the, for the short sightedness. It would have not have been a big deal. We were driving home from Tallahassee, my brother lives, four hour drive home, and I'm watching this disaster play out. <laughs> and so then people started the countdown. Two hours, no response from Orlando City Soccer. Three hours, no response. So people were actually keeping down, waiting for the response to happen. So uh, long story short, they finally went on to social, saw what was happening, quickly acted to apologize and do away with it. But it was that time in between from the automation to their response back. So right. if you automate, just make sure you're also listening as well. That's a, that's a great point. You know, in one of our one of our members was really curious that, as far as their time and i know we touched on this a little bit earlier you know the biggest thing for entrepreneurs whether you have a product or whether you have a store or whether you're working is you know where do you focus your time and you, you know how do you know if it should be on your website or really on social because it does take a lot of time you know a lot of attention yeah so Ideally, it's probably both places. I mean, depending on what it is. If it's a funny meme that your uh, community is going to engage with and love, probably doesn't need to be on your website. If it's something that's going to provide value to your customers, okay, and your audience and your community. If it's something that you're going to want to post again later on, 
put it on your website. Okay, that's a good point. And, yeah, and I think that differentiation is really kind of where you should be focusing is, you know, is it fast or is it something that I can continue to talk about? And for a company with a product, you know, should they focus on, because on Facebook you have groups, you have pages and who knows what's coming down the pipeline. You know, do they need all of those platforms or should they pick one and stick with it? You know, it, it's interesting, um, especially with the, the client of Facebook or the, the climate of Facebook right now, it's kind of in transition. So uh, what I tell you today or recommend today may be totally different in a month from now, but um, you know, Facebook of course has its advantages with pages. You can boost, you can um, you know, schedule ads, you can do all sorts of things and get all sorts of analytical feedback to yeah. help you fine tune future promotions. Whereas communities, a um, little bit different. However, communities right now have a greater organic reach. So Facebook has stated that they really want those communities to be what we would think of, a meeting of friends that really use it to engage and talk with each other. Right. Now, you can definitely use those to your advantage if you're a brand. So there's a live streaming service that I actually uh, do some consulting for. And so they have their Facebook page where they put out company news, if they have an update, if they change anything in their cloud where they store everything. They have general information they can send out to their members. But the people that use their live streaming services are very different. They have gamers that will use the service to stream to Twitch. And then they also have houses of worship. A lot of churches will use it to live stream their Sunday service. Okay. So we have some very organic communities within this service that they've created a Facebook group for. So they have their gamer group because gamers obviously would have a very different conversation about their service than houses of worship would be. So if you are a page that already has some segmented populations, you might try creating those groups for those. Uh, the advantage is that um, you can recreate, recruit some people that absolutely love your service and the influencers to kind of head up those communities for you yeah. and your biggest advocates. Um, people get to ask more personal questions. It really humanizes the brand, um, but then you don't lose the overall general information of that page. Yeah. I think that's a good point. You're really figuring out what you want out of uh, your efforts. And if you want to foster that community, you know, Facebook's got a really good tool for that. You know, and so if you were to give somebody one piece of advice on how they can really prepare their business for success moving forward, you know, what would that be? The advice that I would give every single day, and in fact, I just tweeted about this earlier. Um, are you serving your community? Are you selling to your community or are you serving them? Because there's a huge difference. Ideally, you want to be selling to your community, but it's only by serving your community, by being a resource for them, by providing value, by solving a problem for them, that you are doing that service for them. If you are providing a service, they find you valuable enough to give you their time. If you are not providing a service to them, you are no longer valuable to them and you're not worth their time. So if you can create content that it's a service for them, shows them that you're this authority that's here to help them in your industry, then it's going to be golden for you. That's a really good point. And I, I appreciate your time so much. I think that, you know, ending on that is just the perfect, uh, perfect way to stop, you know, deliver good quality content and think about others, not yourself. You know, phenomenal advice. I, I appreciate your time so much. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, Joel, for having me and good luck to everybody out there.